Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome dear students. I hope you are all doing well. So dear students, today we will continue our chapter history and story. The Great Fire of London from the unit London. But before proceeding to the lesson, I would like to tell you a brief summary of the last lecture. So dear students, in the first paragraph by the morning, the whole street caught fire and everything uh, that was in the basements exploded and the families began to collect their uh, goods and they were moving their children out of their houses then there were um, groups of men and they were fighting with the fire they were they tried to they were trying to stop the fire and then there was King Charles he was looking at the city of London and suddenly he saw that a mass of black smoke has stopped the daylight he ordered the Lord Mayor that he may have all the soldiers he needs to stop the fire from spreading further in the second paragraph the Lord Mayor wanted to know how did the fire begin and who's to blame the people told him that those were foreigners and some told him that the fire raisers were revolutionaries then there was the baker mr Ferner. he was summoned to tell what he knew of the fire but he got worried that no one should blame him and he remembered a strange circumstances that the fire started from the bread oven and it had spread so far and so fast so the people thought that there must be arsonists the culprits operating all over the city they, and they were unable to stop the fire and they turned all their energies to find the culprits then there was a Frenchman and he was knocked down with an iron bar for the crime of being foreigner then there was a woman and she was holding her apron gathered up in front of her and there was a mob, a crowd and they screamed at the lady that look she has fireballs in, hidden in her apron and she is the culprit. The woman sat senseless and a dozen of fluffy yellow cheeks moved out of her apron apron and ran in various directions at last the indecisive mayor gave permission for a fire break and the soldiers with bill hooks began pulling apart whole streets of houses the people screamed prayers and abused them and they grasped their children tightly and they pulled their furniture that was clear of the falling stones but it was too late and everything was under the fire now dear students we will continue our lesson from paragraph number four on page number 63 down at the river the watermen had mustered every watertight pot and barge in the city and were busy evacuating families and goods down river the river was a red glare, the smoke an artificial night, but the watermen were pitiless in demanding their fee. As the hours passed and they found they had more trade than they could handle, they demanded higher and higher sums. Huge purses of money changed hands so that a dresser and a harpsichord should float with their owners downstream out of danger. Already there were tables and benches afloat on the tide, safer in the water than out of it. Crowds jostled at the waterside for a chance to board children up to their knees in mud, women balancing, women balancing on landing stages, men hangling and swearing in among them pickpockets were lifting a fortune in watches and silk handkerchiefs and unattended bag here and there and unattended 
unattended roll of cutlery so dear students first of all the meanings of the difficult words mustard mean mobilize and barge mean long boards evacuating remove removing glare glaze pitiless cruel plot move on downstream moving in direction where stream flow harpsichord a stringed instrument with keyboard jostled pushed hangling bargain persistently pick pockets thieves and unattended not noticed cutlery knives or forks so in the fourth paragraph you will learn that the waterman mobilize each of their boards either the water tight boards and or the long boards part me long boards in the city and they were busy removing families and their goods down the river the river was like a glaze and the smoke an artificial night but the watermen were cruel in demanding their fee and they, and they don't care about the situation they didn't care about the the fire and they didn't care about the people who suffered or who were suffering as the hour passed and they found they had more trade than they could handle they demanded higher and higher sums then they were demanding higher and higher sums and huge purses of money changed hands so that a dresser and harpsichord should float move on should move on with their owners to the downstream out of any danger but already there were tables and benches those were not sunken on the tide and they were safer in the water because they were out of it so the crowds pushed uh, to the towards the water side and uh, to, to get, uh, get on the board and the children's up to their knees in mud the women were balancing on the landing stages and the men were bargaining persistently and among them there were thieves and they were cutting the bags and the pockets of the people with knives and forks so they found a fortune in such situation fifth paragraph the gold smiths and silver uh, silver smiths of the city converged on the tower of london to deposit their valuables in the stone vaults and impregnable dungeons of the ancient fortress but who even would but would even the tower keep out the fire church spires were toppling like trees stone building buildings crashing crumbling crumpling their stones bursting like bombs the booksellers of london chose st paul's cathedral as a safe place for their stock for it was built in stone and lead and bronze not kindling like the houses with jostled round it so dear students uh, then there were some gold smiths and silver smiths and they all meet on the tower of london to deposit their precious items 
in the our group and they were unable to capture but the tower too got fire and the church spires were toppling like uh, trees they were falling like trees and stone buildings were cracking and falling down and they were crushing and the stone their stones were breaking out like bombs the booksellers of london thought that st paul's cathedral is a safe place for their stock and because it was built in stone and lead and bronze and it was not made with small stakes that are used for lightning fire like the houses which were pushed round it now has seemed to have risen close to the surface of the world that day in places the ground was too hot to walk on and the air seared nose and throat and lungs rats and mice driven from the burning buildings squeaked like demons along the streets at one time an area 2 miles long and 1 mile wide was alight and burning so dear students on that day it seemed like the hell have risen close to the surface of the world and the ground ground was too hot to walk on and the air was highly hot that uh, it was affecting the nose and throat and lungs and the rats and mice mice driven from they moved out from the burning buildings and they were crying on the roads like uh, the demons along the streets at one time an area of 2 miles long and 1 mile wide was alight and burning the army was blowing up buildings with gunpowder now adding to the din at 8 o'clock on tuesday night a cry went up while which turned the booksellers hearts to printers pulp st paul's was burning lead streamed molten out of its roof pouring down in the cataracts of incandescent silver into the walls it poured making a bonfire of the books and pamphlets and maps and bibles the great bells set swinging and ringing by the hot updraught updraught began to lose their their shape to soften and bow to sage to melt in brilliant torrents so now dear students the army was blowing the buildings with uh, gunpowder it is also known as the black powder and it is an explosive material then st paul was burning and the lead that was melted streamed out of its roof and it was falling down in large like it was falling down like and large it was falling down like large waterfalls because they were heated and it flowed flowed into the walls and it was making an large open air fire and all the books pamphlets maps and bible were born, burnt burnt in this fire
the great wells were also melted and then they began to lose their shape and they became softened and bent to sink or to melt in the shape of flood or stream now this runs the last paragraph the great fire had reached the limit limit of its strength the explosion had finally starved it of new food outside london in the parks 100000 people huddled bewildered and homeless amid the few worldly goods they had managed to save a cradle a wheel baron a sudden chair the king organized relief supplies of food to be fetched in from the countryside and personally administered the billeting of the homeless in churches and inns but those who had lost their homes simply roamed about the ruins picking over the ashes of their houses and counting the cost so in the last paragraph dear students the great fire reached at the limits of its strength and it was a huge cause to suffer outside London in the parks over 1100 people were gathered and they were confused they were homeless and they had saved some goods so that they could live their life they could not suffer harshly and they managed to save a cradle, a wheelbarrow, and a sedan chair. Now, the king organized relief supplies of foods to be provided to the homeless people, the people who suffered, and he personally administered the accommodation of the homeless people in churches and inns. And in inns. But those people who had lost their homes they were simply roaming around their homes those were ruined and they were picking the remainings of their houses and they were counting the price so dear students this was the story of the great fire of london i hope you will understand it but all you have to do is read the lesson again for better understanding. Thank you dear students. Allah Hafiz.